Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be showing you a non-standard proof to 1 squared plus 2 squared plus so on, all the way up to n squared. Now, what we want to do is find a closed form for this guy here. In other words, write this as an explicit function of n. And the way you usually do this is you're told what that function of n is, and you prove that this equation is true just by induction on n. And certainly it's a valid proof, but it's not too interesting because it's never really motivated where that right-hand side comes from. Now, in a previous video, I'll leave a link for it in the description below, but in a previous video, I kind of showed you how to do this kind of in general. So if we change all these twos in the exponents to k's, I showed you a cool way to evaluate this sum here by kind of not doing induction on k, but kind of knowing what it is for k minus 1, and then from that working out what it is for k. But in this video, we're looking at the case k equals 2, but I'm not going to be doing induction or using the trick that I had before. What I'm going to be doing, you, doing is showing you a combinatorial argument to this guy here. So without much further ado, let's get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a claim, and that is the sum from t equals 0 to n of t choose k is equal to n plus 1 choose k plus 1 for some uh, positive integer k. Uh, well, to see that this is true, we could just prove this by induction, but to keep with the theme of this video, I'm not going to be proving this by induction, I'm going to be using combinatorics to prove this. So let's prove this, so our proof. And what we're going to do is start from our right-hand side, and I'm mainly just going to kind of describe this proof and perhaps write just a couple of things down. But let's start from our right-hand side, n plus 1 choose k plus 1. Remember, that's a number of ways of choosing uh, k plus 1 items from a set of n plus 1 items. Or another way we can think about it is if, is if we have the numbers 1, 2, all the way up to n plus 1. Essentially, we're, choosing, or we're counting the number of subsets of this guy here, which have size k plus 1. Well, notice that if we take any subset of this guy here, which has size k plus 1, it's going to have a largest element. We don't know what that largest element is, but for now we're going to call it t plus 1. So we're going to take a k plus 1 subset of, uh, uh, of this guy here, okay, and it's going to have its first element, its second element, and so on, all the way up to its k plus 1 element. Okay, and we, so this is its first element, this is its second, all the way up to its k plus 1 element. And we don't know what that k plus 1 element is, but we're just going to call it t plus 1. So any subset of that guy there must have k plus 1 elements. Okay, oh, sorry, any subset of size k plus 1 here, or any subset of this guy here which has size k plus 1 must have a largest element, and we're going to call that largest element t plus 1. And then we have k remaining elements to choose from. But then, how many you know, ways are there to fill up those k spaces? Well, there's precisely t choose k. Because once we have our biggest element fixed, then every other element must be strictly smaller than that, so it must have... You know, a tr the, you know, there's only t numbers, the numbers 1 up to t that it could take. And we need to choose k of those numbers, so there's precisely t choose k ways to do that. And that, of course, is depending on what t is. But remember, t plus 1, well, of course, has to be less than or equal to n plus 1 by this guy here. But then, of course, it's got to be at least equal to 1. It's got to be at least 1. Uh, it can't be less than 1, um, because it's, it's, it's the biggest element. So, it, you know, if it was 0, then that means... We've got 0 in our set, but that's not possible because it's a subset of 1 up to n plus 1. Anyway, so we have that guy there, which of course tells us that t is between 0 and n. So the number of subsets of size k plus 1 of this guy here is simply this thing here. So we fix what t is, okay? And t, of course, is between 0 and n. And then once we know what that largest element is, t plus 1, then we know that there are t choose k sets. So we've got the sum from t equals 0 to n of t choose k, and that's going to give us n plus 1 choose k plus 1. So that's how we prove that guy there. Let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so we just showed that the sum from t equals 0 to n of t choose k is equal to n plus 1 choose k plus 1. The next thing we're going to do is consider this expression here. The sum from t equals 0 to n of a plus bt plus c times t times c minus 1 over 2. So here a, b, and c are just arbitrary real numbers, and we'll get back to those in just a second. But what we can do is just notice that this is the same as the sum from t equals 0 to n, well, a is the same as a times 1, and 1 is the same as t choose 0. So this is the same as a times t choose 0. And then we're going to get a plus b times t, but t is the same as t choose 1, like so. And then we've got c times t times t minus 1 over 2, but that is the same as c times t choose 2. So all of these guys here just come from the definition of this kind of choose notation. n choose r is just n factorial over r factorial over n minus r factorial. Anyway, so we have this equals this 
But notice then, we, if we kind of write this as three summations, we can use our result from, from before. So this is equal to a times the sum from t equals 0 to n of t choose 0. So that's exactly what we have there with the case k equals 0. So that's going to equal n plus 1 choose 1. And then we've got b times the case where k equals 1. So we're going to get n plus 1 choose 2, like so. And then we're going to get c times the case where k is 2. So n plus 1 choose 3, like so. So we have that the sum from t equals 0 to n of a plus bt plus c times t times c minus 1 over 2 is equal to this guy here. But now notice, if we remember a, b, and c here are arbitrary, so we can you know, choose them to be whatever we want. So if we say a equals 0, b equals 1, and c equals 2, let's have a look at what happens up here. Well then we're going to get this guy here vanishing. This b here is 1, so we've just got a t. And then we've got c being equal to 2, so this c is going to cancel with this 2 here. So we've got the sum from t equals 0 to, to n of t plus t times t minus 1. But if we expand this, we're going to get t squared minus t, and this t and that minus t cancel. So all in all, we've just got the sum from t equals 0 to n of t squared. And remember, this is equal to this guy here, but of course we've got a equals 0, so this term vanishes. We've got b equals 1, so that's just a 1 times this thing here. And then we've got c times n plus 1 choose 3, and c is just 2. So now we've got the sum from t equals 0 to n of t squared is just an expression in terms of n. n plus 1 choose 2 plus 2 times n plus 1 choose 3. So all we've got to do now is essentially just expand this here, and we'll have an explicit formula for this guy here. Anyway, let me clean up the whiteboard, and I'll do that last step. Okay, so we just showed that the sum from t equals 0 to n of t squared is n plus 1 choose 2 plus 2 times n plus 1 choose 3. Now, of course, this left-hand side here is exactly what we want. It's the sum of the first n squares. But, of course, we can ignore t equals 0 and just start from 1 because, of course, 0 squared is 0. So we have the sum from t equals 1 to n of t squared. Exactly what we want is this guy here. Let's go ahead and expand it. n plus 1 choose 2 is simply n times n plus 1 over 2. And then we've got two lots of uh, n plus 1 choose 3, which is n times n plus 1 times n minus 1 all over 3, like so. Uh, all over 3 factorial, which is 6, sorry. But then let's put this over 6, so we're going to get a 3 times n times n plus 1 over 6, like so, and then bring everything under one common denominator. So we've got this is equal to 3n times n plus 1 plus 2 lots of n times n plus 1 times n minus 1 all over 6. And then, of course, we can factor out an n and an n plus 1 from both these guys in the numerator. So this is equal to n times n plus 1 times, we're just left with 3 here, plus 2 lots of n minus 1. But then if we just go ahead and expand that, we're going to get a 2, oh, let me put the divide by 6 in the bottom. If we expand what's in the square brackets, we're going to get 3 plus 2n minus 2, and that, of course, is just 2n plus 1. So this thing here is just 2n plus 1, like so. So we get that the sum of the first n square numbers is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And if you've seen this formula before by induction, you'll know that that is indeed the correct answer. Anyway, I hope that has all made sense. What's really nice about this kind of argument is you can uh, do the same thing to you know, work out the sum of the first n cubed numbers using pretty much the same argument, of course, using different values of a, b, c, and you'd have to introduce a d as well. And of course, you can do the same thing with powers of 4, powers of 5, and so on. And what's quite neat about this is you do not need to know, uh, you know, if, you, if I wanted to work out the sum of the first n powers of 7, I do not need to know the sum of the first n powers of 6. Uh, which is what I needed in the video which I've linked in the description below, the, a previous video I'd made. Anyway, I am waffling now. I hope this has all made sense. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.